Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of portamines A and B. This work was published in JAX by the groups of Phil Baran and Christopher Parker in their paper, Scalable Total Synthesis of Portamine A and B, reveals the basis of their potent and selective anti-cancer activity. These compounds were first isolated from the benthic dinoflagellate vulcanodinium rugosum in 2013 and 2018. These compounds are highly cytotoxic, with an LC50 of less than 3 nanomolar, as they induce apoptosis in several different cancer cell lines. However, the precise mode of action remains unknown. There have been several efforts made toward the synthesis, with several studies reported on fragments of the molecule, but until now, a complete synthesis had not been achieved. The structure is quite intriguing, as it contains a tricyclic macrocyclic core with an appended spirofused cyclic imine. This macrocyclic core is spanned by a cyclic ketal, linking the two sides of the molecule. The Baran group has devised a very interesting strategy for the synthesis of this molecule, involving an intramolecular alkyl metathesis to form the macrocycle, an intercepted ketal reduction forming the trans-spanning ketal via a ring chain isomerism, and an inverse electron demand diels alder to establish the scaffold necessary to form the cyclic imine. So let's look at the synthesis. This started with an asymmetric diels alder reaction of Rawls dyeing using a chiral cobalt catalyst. The product of this reaction was then reacted with sodium borohydride to reduce the aldehyde, and the TBS group was then removed using TBAF. This silyl deprotection generates a negative charge that promotes an E1CB elimination of the carbamate group, resulting in the formation of an enone in an 88% yield with a 94% EE. In the next step, the primary alcohol was oxidised back to an aldehyde using Tempo. Sodium hypochlorite first oxidises Tempo to form an oxonium, and this is then attacked by the primary hydroxyl group. The resulting N oxide then deprotonates the molecule, forming the aldehyde and producing hydroxylamine. This hydroxylamine is then reoxidized back to Tempo, once again by sodium hypochlorite. This aldehyde was then reacted in a Grignard addition with 3 pentyl magnesium bromide. This added to the carbonyl to produce a secondary alcohol upon workup that was then oxidized to a ketone using desmartin periodinane. This first attacks the iodine center, displacing one of the acetates that can then act as a base to deprotonate the molecule, forming the ketone with a 60% yield over three steps. With the ketone in place, they could then use it to produce the spirocyclic imine. The Bach protected amine was first deprotected using TFA, and this underwent a spontaneous cyclization to generate the imine. The ketone first undergoes intramolecular attack from the amine, generating a hemiaminal that is then protonated by TFA and eliminates water to produce the imine in a 72% yield. In order to set the stage for the ring closing alkyne metathesis macrocyclization, the researchers needed to install another alkyne group. They did this using a Gilman addition. This reaction proved to be quite troublesome, as the more common copper sources didn't work well for this system. Instead, they used copper pent 19 which they first reacted with triphenylphosphine. They then generated their desired alkene nucleophile from the corresponding iota compound by reacting it with tbuli. These were then mixed to generate the desired organocuprate nucleophile. This attacked the enone at the beta position, generating an enolate intermediate that was then triflated with Commons reagent in a 70% yield. While this compound could be reacted in the ring-closing alkyl metathesis, they found that the basicity of the imine nitrogen reduced the efficiency of the catalyst and necessitated high catalyst loadings. In order to avoid this, they first protected it with a troc group. DMAP first reacts with troc chloride, producing the activated ester that is then attacked by the imine nitrogen. The aminium ion produced by this reaction now bearing the electron withdrawing troc group, undergoes an elimination reaction, generating the n troc enamine in a 96% yield. With this in hand, they could then carry out the ring closing alkyne metathesis reaction. This was carried out using a molybdenum based catalyst developed by the Firstner group. This bears a canopy ligand that blocks the bottom face of the catalyst. The molybdenum first reacts with the alkyne, forming a four membered cyclometallated intermediate. A cycloreversion then occurs and a methyl aryl alkyne is then expelled, producing the active alkyne molybdenum species. 
an intramolecular addition then occurs with the other alkene present in the molecule, once again generating a four-membered cyclic intermediate. A rearrangement of the pi bonds, followed by a cycloreversion, produced the desired macrocyclic alkyne, together with the regeneration of the molybdenum catalyst. The crude product of this reaction was then taken forward without purification and subject to hydrolysis conditions with PTSA in wet methanol. The enamine is first protonated, and water can then act as a nucleophile towards the aminium ion, generating a hemiaminal intermediate. A proton transfer generates the ammonium leaving group, and the carbon nitrogen bond is broken as the carbonyl forms. Overall, the trough protection, alkyne metathesis, and hydrolysis steps form the product in a 68% yield over three steps. The completion of this macrocycle brought to the end the cyclase phase of the synthesis, which constructed the carbon skeleton of the molecule. This brings us to the second phase of the synthesis, which is the oxidase phase. This involves setting the correct oxidation pattern on the framework and installing all of the necessary functional groups. This began with a gold promoted skeletal reorganization. The mechanism I present here has not been proven and is only one of several mechanisms that could be proposed for this transformation, so let me know in the comments if you think it will go through a different path. The gold one catalyst can coordinate to the alkyne, making it more electrophilic and this allows for the intramolecular attack of the hydroxyl group. The amine could then attack the ketone, allowing for the oxygen to act as a nucleophile towards the gold-activated enol ether, forming both the aminal and acetal bonds. This product was not isolated, and instead was directly oxidised using dichlorotris triphenylphosphine ruthenium. This is first oxidised by terbutyl hydrogen peroxide to form a ruthenium dioxide complex that can undergo a cycloaddition to the alkene. Iodide, present in the form of TBAI, then attacks this ruthenium centre, displacing one of the oxygen ligands. Beta hydride elimination of the ruthenium species generates the ketone, and the alpha hydroxyl group can then be oxidised further by ruthenium and TBHP to form the diketone in a 53% yield. Carbon 15 of this diketone needed to be stereoselectively reduced. This could not be done directly, so instead, the carbonyl and carbon 14 was stereoselectively reduced using L-selectride, which is a bulky reducing agent guided by steric hindrance. To this crude reaction mixture, they then added sodium borohydride. This is a much smaller reducing agent, and the hydride was able to add to the more sterically hindered carbon-15, generating the desired isomer in an 83% yield. Carbon-14 of this dihydroxy compound could then be selectively oxidised using a tempo oxidation, as we saw earlier. This is a sterically bulky reagent, and therefore is selective for the less sterically hindered C14 position. Taking this compound forward, it was then reduced with zinc and acetic acid. Rather remarkably, this had the effect of performing a ring chain tautomerization. During this reaction, the troc group is lost from the nitrogen, and this reverts to the imine, while the acetal is reduced. An intermediate of this reduction is an oxonium ion that can be intercepted by the C15 hydroxyl group, forming an acetal that spans the macrocyclic core and completes the target portamine skeleton. This product was taken forward to a rubotum oxidation. TBS triflate is first attacked by the ketone, and this triggers an elimination reaction that forms a silyl enol ether. This was then attacked by DMDO, forming an epoxide. The electron density residing on the oxygen of the silyl ether can open the epoxide upon the reformation of the carbonyl, and the silyl group then migrates forming a silyl ether alpha to the starting ketone. This compound was then oxidised using oxone, which cleaves the silyl ether to generate the hydroxyl group, in addition to the oxidation of the imine to a nitrone. This nitrone was required to carry out a bocalhyde rearrangement. The compound is reacted with acetic anhydride, which acylates both the hydroxyl group and the nitrone. This acylated nitrone is very electron withdrawing and can trigger an elimination reaction, forming an enamine type intermediate. This can then undergo a 3 plus 3 sigmatropic rearrangement, which forms a new carbon-oxygen bond, together with the formation of an imine, and the breaking of the nitrogen-oxygen bond. The acetate formed by this rearrangement was then selectively cleaved in a 64% yield, without the hydrolysis of the other acetate present in the molecule. In the next step, the compound took part in a Suzuki reaction. Palladium-0 first undergoes an oxidative addition into the carbon triflate bond, and this undergoes transmetallation with potassium vinyl trifluoroborate. 
with both carbon groups now coordinated to the palladium, a reductive elimination can take place, forming the desired carbon-carbon bond. From here, the simple oxidation of the hydroxyl group with DMP to form a ketone, followed by the hydrolysis of the acetate group using ammonia and methanol, produced portamine B in an 88% yield. To generate portamine A, a simple reduction with sodium cyanoborohydride reduced this ketone in an 80% yield, completing the synthesis of portamine A. Well, I hope you enjoyed this very impressive synthesis. Join me in the next video where we will look at the total synthesis of lysergic acid.